Hey guys, thank you for watching the Slat Rock channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. And if you've already done so, just make sure that it's still active. Today we present you with the top 10 most laughable wrestling matches most WWE fans probably forgot. Number 10. Kennel from Hell The Hell in a Cell match is one of the most barbaric stipulations in WWE history, with plenty of superstars having their careers shortened by stepping foot inside the satanic structure. But at Unforgiven 1999, the WWE tried to reinvent the classic match as part of the feud between the Big Boss Man and Al Snow. After the former correctional officer had killed Snow's dog Pepper and force-fed the pet to Snow, the WWE hosted the first-ever Kennel from Hell match to settle this war once and for all. A Hell in a Cell match with rabid dogs present and the Brooklyn Brawler as special guest referee, the match certainly could have been a show-stealer if it had gone to plan. Instead, these so-called rabid dogs were anything but and would often shy away from the wrestlers rather than attack them, and occasionally relieve themselves outside the ring. With urine and feces all around, the dogs weren't the only ones crapping on this match as the crowd were virtually silent throughout. Although Al Snow did get the pinfall and was able to avenge his pet, no one came out of this looking like a winner. Number 9. Judy Bagwell on a Pole Vince Russo is one of the most controversial people in professional wrestling history. While he did usher in some great moments in the Attitude Era, he is probably best remembered for his bizarre booking in the final years of WCW. One of his weirdest match types came at New Blood Rising 2000, when Buff Bagwell faced Chris Canyon in the first ever Judy Bagwell on a Pole match. The real-life mother of Buff, Judy was actually suspended on a forklift as the two men in the ring fought over her. Unsurprisingly, the match was terrible as both men failed to deliver a decent performance, as they both probably realized they were making history for the wrong reasons. As if things weren't bad enough, the match was made worse by the return of David Arquette, who had held the WCW World Championship earlier that same year. Despite the Scream actor's efforts, Buff was able to hold off him and Canyon and reclaim his mother as a prize. Although WWE have brought back WCW projects like Starcade and War Games in recent years, we're hoping we'll never have to relive a Judy Bagwell on a pole match. Number 8. The Barroom Brawl Stop me if you heard this one. The Brooklyn Brawler, Doink the Clown, and the Easter Bunny walk into a bar. While it may sound like the start of a terrible joke, this did happen at Vengeance 2003 as part of the APA's Open Invitational Barroom Brawl. A part of the first ever SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view, the team of Bradshaw and Farouk gathered some of WWE's toughest and strangest superstars in a bar near the entrance ramp. Everyone from a drunk Funaki to Matt Hardy to even Brother Love was there, as the former manager of The Undertaker attempted to defuse the hostility with his own brand of peace. Surprisingly, Love was one of the last two combatants in the match, going up against Bradshaw. Despite Love's best efforts, the Texan refused to take it easy on him, and after demolishing the red-faced man, was deemed the winner of the incredibly strange but fun match. Number 7. A Real Piece of Junk in 1999, it's arguable that professional wrestling was at its most popular. The WWF and WCW were doing incredibly well, with ECW also gathering its own brand of fans. Part of what was making wrestling so popular was due to more fans enjoying hardcore wrestling, and although purists may have hated the concept, casual fans lapped it up. It was with this in mind that WCW created one of their worst matches of all time at Bash at the Beach 1999. Dubbed the WCW Junkyard Invitational, the match took place in an actual junkyard where the only way to win was to escape over a fence. Now this sounds like it could have been good until you realize just how ridiculous WCW made the match by having cars wired to explode at random points. If that wasn't dumb enough, this match was mostly jobbers, so you couldn't see them as it was filmed from a helicopter overhead. Lasting a painful 13 minutes and 51 seconds, the match came to an end when Fit Finley escaped, capturing the WCW Hardcore Trophy. 
The cherry on top of this terrible match is that several wrestlers were seriously hurt, though because of bad camera angles, the fans couldn't even see that. Number 6. Baby Wants His Bottle Razor Ramon had always prided himself in being one of the coolest stars in the World Wrestling Federation. Debuting in the company in 1992, Ramon oozed machismo, and with his slicked back hair and cocky demeanor, showed why sometimes it was cool to be the bad guy. Known as a cool cat, Ramon was putting a lot on the line when he took on the 123 Kid at In Your House 6 in 1996 in a crybaby match. In case you haven't heard of it, the stipulation was that the loser would have to dress in a diaper after the match, something that neither man obviously wanted. Fortunately for Ramon, he was able to topple the kid, who had been a thorn in his side for years, and force the future X-Pac into the diaper. As if that wasn't embarrassing enough, the kid would also be covered in baby powder just to add insult to injury. While well, X-Pac has since gone on to have an incredible career including reigns as European, light heavyweight, and cruiserweight champions, it's hard to imagine he'll ever be able to live this awful match down. Number 5. The Four Doinks Come to Play Longtime wrestling fans will tell you that 1993 to 1996 was not a great time in the WWF. While Hulkamania had finally left, the company was still dominated by wacky, colorful characters that many fans were growing out of. And at Survivor Series 1993, the WWE proved they were behind on the times when they had not one, but four of their superstars dress as Doink the Clown. The four Doinks were actually the Bushwhackers and Men on a Mission who took on the Head Shrinkers Bastion Booger and Bam Bam Bigelow. With four literal clowns in the ring, this match was full of comedy spots, though someone seemingly forgot to tell the fans to laugh. One of the head shrinkers even got pinned after slipping on a banana peel, which pleased absolutely no one. While Vince McMahon, who was still working at the time on the commentary desk, tried his best to make it seem funny, the chairman wasn't fooling anyone, as the match eventually came to an end when the clowns emerged victorious after 11 minutes. Number 4. The Snake Ruins the Blindfold Match Jake Roberts is easily one of the greatest minds to enter the WWE. With incredible promos and a knowledge of psychology, Roberts could have easily had a long career backstage in WWE if he had not turned to substance abuse instead. In one of his most iconic feuds in WWE, Roberts faced off against the model Rick Martel, who had sprayed his own perfume, appropriately titled Arrogance, in Roberts' face. Temporarily blinding Roberts, the snake wanted Martel to feel the same feeling of helplessness and challenged him to a blindfold match at WrestleMania 7. As Jake's eye had healed at this point, both men were forced to wear hoods, and it was at this point that Jake's intelligence failed him. Putting his hands inside the hood, fans could clearly see Jake's hand, revealing that there was a mesh in the hood, allowing both men to see, ruining the match entirely. A series of bad booking decisions made this match a stinker, though at least Roberts did get his vengeance, pinning Martel after 8 minutes. This would ironically not be the last time we saw the blindfold match, as it was used in later years for epic feuds like Hornswoggle vs Chavo Guerrero and Santino Morella vs Drew McIntyre. Number 3. Viagra on a Pole If there's one thing WCW's writing team loved, it was putting things on a pole. And although there was no shortage of weird things that had been up for grabs in the Georgia-based promotion, few of them were weirder than a bottle of Viagra. This all came as part of a feud between Shane Douglas and Billy Kidman, as the BK Bomber revealed that Douglas struggled to <clears throat> stand for attention when in bed with Tori Wilson. The only way to settle this feud, apparently, was to set up a Viagra on a pole match, which didn't even make it to the pay-per-view, but was instead on the next edition of Monday Nitro. The pills that were on the pole could legally be used as a weapon, though we shudder to think how that would have worked. Shockingly, the fans didn't like the match, as both men tried their best despite the awful storyline and match they were in. The finish, if you can call it that, came when Tori made her presence known, attacked Kidman, and allowed Douglas to retrieve the bottle. Post-match, Tori rubbed Kidman's face in the pills, though we're pleased we didn't see what happened next. Number 2. The Mountie Gets Locked Up 
In the early 1990s, it seemed that every profession was represented by someone in the WWF. Whether you were a trash man, a correctional officer, or even a plumber, it seemed that everyone and anyone was welcomed on the roster. As a representative of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Mountie vowed to always get his man, and often did that, though through less than honest means. The Mountie's evil deeds eventually found himself on the list of the Big Boss Man, and the pair competed in a jailhouse match at SummerSlam 1991. After coming up short, the Mountie was hauled off to a night in prison, something that the Canadian was not pleased with. After being asked to give his fingerprints, the Mountie instead gave the police the middle finger, beating Stone Cold to it by several years. The best, or should that be worst, part of this whole ordeal was when the Mountie met some of his fellow inmates, and what happened next is anyone's guess. Number 1. The Duchess Comes to Illinois Chris Jericho may have been able to retain the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 17, but the war between him and William Regal was far from over. Meeting at the next pay-per-view backlash, the English star promised to embarrass Y2J in the first-ever Queensbury Rules match. The main problem for fans, though, is that no one in the crowd or at home knew the rules, and neither did commentators Jim Ross and Paul Heyman. When Jericho went for a pinfall, the so-called Duchess who sat at ringside said that the first round time limit had expired, negating the Fozzy frontman's pin. And after beating Regal a second time, this time by submission, the Duchess would once again interfere, announcing that the match could not be won by submission. Regal ended up the winner, though given the various rule changes that helped him along the way, how could he have lost? Well guys, that's our list. If you like this video, don't forget to check out our previous video 10 occasions where even WWE hardcore fans were fooled by WWE. Also check out our other high rated videos by clicking at the upper right hand corner or down in the description field. If you did like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss a single new video. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and as always, thank you for watching. watching.